So you think that radiology sounds like a possible career choice for you, but you're not sure how much you could potentially make. Well, let's talk about that. First, what does an x-ray tech actually do? Whenever a patient comes into a hospital or their provider's office with an issue, their provider is able to order an x-ray exam to be completed, which is where an x-ray tech comes in. Once an order is received and the patient is there, you go get the patient, you perform the x-ray with positioning them, setting a technique for your exposure, and then taking the x-ray. You send the x-ray over to the radiologist and you tell the patient to have a great day. A typical x-ray exam could take five minutes or less. So the patient interaction time is very small with each individual patient. It can be a pretty physically demanding job as you're on your feet most of the day if you're at a busy hospital or outpatient facility. But if you're looking for a position that gets you up and away from a desk, then this could be a great option for you. The schooling to become a radiographer only takes two years, so it's an associate's degree. If you're looking to get into a career quickly after high school, or if you have a family and you need to have a stable income very quickly, then this is a great choice for you. For reference, I do live in the Midwest. I am in Ohio. So there are states that make more than what we will make here, and there are states that make less than what we will make here. And you can look on indeed.com or salary.com to kind of see what the range is for x-ray techs in your area specifically. But I would take that with a grain of salt because it's going to vary dramatically from hospital to hospital or from facility to facility, whether you're working at an outpatient facility, an urgent care, a physician's office, or the hospital. I am in the pediatric specialty, which you would think a specialty would pay more. But actually, in my area, we're paid about 20% less than adult facilities. I'm not here to tell you exactly what I make, but the range in my hospital is starting at $25.99 all the way up to $36.38. So starting out as a new grad, you're not going to step into a mid-range position where you're making $30 an hour as a brand new x-ray tech. If you're making less than $25 an hour as an x-ray tech, pretty much across the board, then you can find a different position that will pay you more. To me, that pay is actually really good to start out with just a two-year degree. And if you're not happy with that number, there are things that you can do to increase your pay over time. So Sydney, how can I make more once I pass my registry? After you become a registered radiographer, you have the option to then go into advanced imaging. The most common route to take for advanced imaging is going into CT or MRI. You also have the option to do more of an angio field or interventional radiology where you're specifically doing procedures all day. And in that role, you're working more as the radiographer and like a surgical technologist assisting the physician with the procedures. You have the option to go back to school to receive an additional certification in these fields and you can do on the job training and then take the registry afterwards. There are even hospitals that don't require you to have that additional certification and registry completed in order to perform that role. If you go into advanced imaging, then you can expect to make about $30 an hour, $31, $32 here in my local area. On salary.com, an MRI technologist will make about $36 an hour. That's the median wage. Also on salary.com, a CT technologist, the median wage is $38 an hour. And this is where I'm weary with using online resources to tell you how much you can make because in general, MRI technologists have in the past traditionally made more than a CT technologist. Over the years with COVID, our pay scale has changed so much. We're making drastically more than what we were making prior to COVID. There were a lot of people who retired early or left the field of healthcare completely because of COVID. So in order to retain their personnel, they have been paying us more. And I think that this is skewing the numbers online a little bit. But in general, I think that 
mid 30 range is pretty accurate for a median wage for a CT tech. You might be thinking, well, Sydney, you discussed MRI and CT, but you haven't mentioned Angio. Angio numbers are going to be all over the place. Angio is where you make the money. It's not because of the base rate that you get paid per hour. Angio gets paid pretty substantially because of the amount of call that they are required to take. And they actually do have to come into the hospital within 30 minutes for an emergency case to perform a procedure. And you get paid really well for that. I take call in my position as an x-ray tech at our, our pediatric facility. Um, but I'm not, I'm not going to get called in. <laughs> so I willingly take call knowing that my, the likelihood that I'll actually get called in is very minimal. In addition to that, I am close to the techs that work at night. And I wouldn't mind coming in if something tragic were to happen and they needed some support both with performing our job duties and just being an emotional support for some of the tragedies that we experience every now and then. If you don't want to go into advanced imaging, but you're still not happy with your base rate, then there are a couple of things that you can do to get paid more. One of the things that I had just mentioned is taking call. Now, this doesn't mean that you will get called in if you are on call depending on your hospital, but you get paid for just being on call and having your phone on and ready to go. Then if you do get called into the hospital, you get paid a certain amount for showing up. And then a lot of locations, even if you show up and you perform all the duties and get caught up within 30 minutes, you still get paid for an hour or two hours or whatever your hospital policy is for that. If you don't want to take call, then you can work on the weekend or in the evenings, whether second or third shift. When you work a second or third shift position, you get what's called shift differential. For my hospital, that's about 15% on top of your base pay that you will get paid just for working in the evening hours. On the weekends, you can receive about 10%. If you don't like any of these options, then you can look into becoming a travel tech. Becoming a travel tech is a great option for people who want to go different places. They don't want to be stuck in the same hospital, especially if you don't like a hospital, then you know that when your contract is over, you can move on to the next location. And it's great if you don't need a consistent paycheck, you will receive your contracted rate for a certain amount of weeks. And then after that, if you don't have a contract lined up for the next one, then you could go without pay for a little while. If you consistently have contracts lined up, then you can make bank, even if it's just within your local area. With the shortage of radiologic technologists in my area, you can take a travel tech position and not even have to leave the local area that you're in. Now, mind you, you might have a long commute, but you don't have to like live in a hotel or find an Airbnb for short term. For example, going on ZipRecruiter.com and just searching travel radiology tech, there's a 13-week contract, day shift, you're making $44 an hour. This other location is offering $2,083.12 every week. That actually comes out to $52 an hour. Here's a hospital that's offering $45 to $50 an hour. Another hospital that is offering $2,000. $474 per week, which equals out to being about $61 an hour if you're working a 40-hour week. And this location is offering $2,300 to $2,800 a week, which is $57 an hour to $70 an hour. Those numbers are pretty crazy if you're thinking of how much you could be making just out of the gate as a new grad in a regular position within a hospital. But there are definitely pros and cons to take into consideration when you're considering a travel tech position. The last thing that I want to mention is using radiology as a stepping stone to go further into a career, whether it be in healthcare or elsewhere. If your long-term goal is to get your bachelor's or master's or even your doctorate, but you need something that can generate an income as somewhat of a side hustle as you pay for school through the rest of it, then radiology is such a great option. I know personally quite a few PAs that were radiology technologists before going into the PA profession. So they went to school two years, became a rad tech, 
And then they got their bachelor's, whether it be in advanced imaging or in education or in healthcare management or in just biology. And they fulfilled all of the requirements to go into PA school, into their master's degree. By doing that, they gained so much patient care experience and so much in-depth knowledge about what to order once they do become a PA actually makes them a much better provider going into this field first. So if your long-term goal doesn't include being a rad tech for the rest of your life, it is still a really great option to begin with, especially if you're just coming out of high school and you need some life experience before going into a, a position of high authority, essentially. I really hope that you learned something from this video today even if it wasn't exactly what you had hoped for it to be, if you were thinking, well, I'm going to make a hundred grand a year being an x-ray tech. I mean, the potential's there. You would just have to work a lot. So just find that work-life balance that works best for you. If you have questions or you want to tell me that you learned something, or if you even had a different experience with your wages, then leave it in the comments below so that we can all learn from each other. And as always, I hope that you guys have a great day and stay safe. I will see you in the next one. Bye.